Good morning. Good afternoon. So I wanted to talk to you guys about Cloud Custodian, which is an open source project that uh, we produce at Capital One to help us keep secure and cost optimized in the, the cloud. So how does it work? What does it do? Why are we doing it? So we want developers to have native experiences. We want, we go, we're going to the cloud to take advantage of the innovation in the cloud to help our app teams develop features for our customers more quickly and be more productive. To do that, we want to enable native experiences for those developers. We don't want to impose some CMP, some other platform that they have to use. We want them to be able to take advantage of the tools, the technology, the ecosystem of, of, of applications. You want to, they want to use vendor, they want to use Mesos, they want to use Terraform, they want to use CloudFormation. We want to enable all of those things. But we also want to make sure that we are secure in the cloud. We want to make sure that all of our customer data are secure. We want to make developers more productive. We want to put the guardrails around them such that they're in a safe place. So to do that, we wrote Custodian. Uh, Custodian is designed, before Custodian we had lots of little one-off scripts that managed different policies, and we realized that was not a sustainable path. From a perspective of, of having something launched and being removed and not having, knowing how or why that happened, uh, from a perspective of not sure, knowing if those random scripts had unit tests, uh, we realized that we needed a comprehensive approach to the problem and one that was transparent for the application developers in their environments. So Custodian does that uh, to the, and all this is really part of the cloud transformation for an organization. Um, the biggest challenge for an organization as they go into a cloud is driving the behavior change, the knowledge change to, to take advantage of the cloud. So Custodian tries to in, drive the, help you drive that behavior change by notifying the application teams, the developers, in real time, as they're doing something wrong, what they did wrong, and how they can change that behavior, and it also fixes the problem. Uh, and also to drive compliance, whole house of reporting, cost savings around off hours. As a tool, Custodian is a Swiss Army knife of the cloud. So, there are lots of tools. We're in the expo hall. There are lots of vendors here that will sell you security. I think security is a right. Uh, that's part of why Custodian is open source. Uh, app, open source has already won over application development. I, I assume almost everyone here that has application developers, they're using some form of open source to help them achieve their job. Why aren't we doing that with compliance and security products? Why not? Well, that's what Custodian tries to do. Uh, it tries to, to enable that, and there's lots of benefits of being an open source. Open source won the application development because it's faster turnaround for features. We track closely to the AWS release notes. Like S3 public block went out like a week and a half ago. We had it in the code base within three or four days. Everyone is empowered to contribute and add features as they see fit. And it also helps us, uh, and we've also created an amazing community of users. We have 600 people in our chat channel that are actively helping each other out as far as help crafting policies, understanding the tool's capabilities. So what does it actually look like? So at the end of the day, it's a bunch of YAML files. Um, welcome to DevOps in the cloud. Uh, it's compliance as code. You write a policy. A policy looks like this. It is a, a YAML configuration file with a set of these policies. Each policy targets a particular resource type. This one targets EBS. Uh, you have a particular mode. The default mode is basically just pulling on the API. And then you can also set up for uh, different execution modes. I'll go into that in a minute. Um, Custodian does integrated provisioning for Lambda, et cetera. Uh, we'll talk about that in a second. But the real crux of it is understanding what most of those random scripts and what most of the tools are trying to do. At the end of the day, they're going to query some set of resources. They're going to do a bunch of filtering to find the things that they want, that they're looking for. And then they're going to take some set of actions on them. So Custodian tries to give you a vocabulary for constructing your own policies. So take a policy, an action like stop in an EC2 instance. Well, I might use that for off hours, or I might use it as an incident response, or I might use it for a compliance reason. So by giving you this vocabulary, this Lego set of actions and filters, you're able to construct your own policy. We see every day people doing things with custodian that we never envisioned, because they're able to use the tool more flexibly to achieve their objectives. So the other key point with custodian is, you know, really into like unit testing, 
coverage, but the other thing that separates it from the random scripts, it's very structured outputs. Consistent outputs across all those different policies. So you might, one of the recent features we added was x-ray support here. So you just do dash dash trace x-ray and boom, you've got x-ray outputs for all of your policies. We do CloudWatch metrics on the number of API calls we make for each policy, the number of resources that matched it. You can construct a dashboard, use Datadog, one of the other vendor tools uh, to construct a dashboard straight out of that. Uh, CloudWatch logs, S3 outputs for JSON. And then, of course, on the driving that behavior change, it's all about that real-time feedback to the users. And so for that, we integrate with uh, SQS, SES, SNS, and we have a separate mailer tool that you can deploy as a standalone Lambda, and deliver to Slack, real-time, chat ops, take your pick. Uh, you can also construct like those policies. You can also string them together for sort of like multi-step workflows. You can check, achieve complex behaviors here. Um, so in this context, we were, we've got sort of a, a you know, human-worded statement of what the policy is on the left-hand side. We want to stop instances that are poorly tagged after a day and then terminate them after three. So custodian supports that. On the left-hand side, this is actually being, that there's two policies here. The one in the center is effectively a config rule. So this is actually get, get a, as we run the command line, it will go ahead and deploy a Lambda, hook up the config rule, and then this will basically run anytime there's a change to an EC2 instance, and if it's missing one of our required tags, it'll go ahead and say, let's tag this instance to be stopped after one day. On the right-hand side, we've got our cleanup policy. This policy is going to come together, co execute every day, and basically look for any of these instances that were marked to be stopped uh, by the, the previous policy, and then go ahead and stop them, and then trigger another future action of terminating them after two days. So you can sort of string these policies together to create very fairly complex workflows, drive remediation efforts, um, create notifies in production uh, before, or you know, any sort of multi-step workflow. Sorry, digressing. So end of the day, people often ask me, what can Custodian do? And I'm like, well, Custodian can, you know, you know if I did the combinatorial Math, math, the math on this and try to figure it out, there's quite literally millions, billions of things you can do. Um, some of the things that we do uh, at Capital One, we, do, we manage encryption at rest, we manage backups, garbage collection, you know, resource boundaries, and I'm going to talk through on some of the security policies uh, that you can try to do with Custodian, as well as some cost savings ones. Uh, let's see. So, architecture diagram. Um, it's a CLI. It's, it's a one-line install. Uh, or a Docker run. Uh, it is stateless, so there's no database, web server, whatever to manage. You just, you, uh, we've got people running this out of you know, Jenkins, we've got people running this with Kubernetes and code build. I mean, really, we're open-ended. You, you get to pick how you want to deploy it because we find that every organization has a different way of doing it, um, so we just try to enable that. So I talked about execution mode. So that CLI has actually got a, its own little serverless framework built into it. Um, and it'll automatically provision uh, your policies across different, uh, different environments. So when you go to run a policy, it's actually uh, abstract to how you want to execute it. By default, on the command line, we'll just pull the APIs, query the resources, run through the filters and actions. But through that built-in serverless provisioning, you can say, I want to subscribe to any CloudTrail API. And we will go ahead and provision a Lambda, provision the CloudWatch events, wire it all in together for you. You want to do an update, it'll automatically push that out as well. And so we integrate with these different runtimes to give us advantage, take advantage of the real-time capabilities in the underlying AWS platform. And of course, the other question is, well, I've got lots of accounts in lots of regions. Um, I don't want to have to script all that to run across all those. So C7.org is basically our, our front end to say, hey, you've got 1,000 accounts in 15 regions. I've got, I want to run this policy against all of them. This will run and execute in parallel across all those regions and accounts. It's got additional capabilities for reporting. You want to run a run, random one-off script across all those accounts. It'll inject the SDK environment variables out there, do all your role assumes for you. And you can, of course, generate the config file for this straight out of the organization's API. We distribute scripts for that so that you can, it's effectively uh, trying to be, make it as simple as possible for you to uh, get deployed in rolling. So at the end of the day, this is all targeted towards compliance as code. Right, so we've talked about it, you know, infrastructure as code is a thing, compliance as code is actually is, is also a thing. But the same value, the as code value, you get, you get automatic auditing, you get versioning, you get rollback, you get code review. All those good things are part, are part of what we try to achieve as the value outcomes for custodian. On the delivery side for CI, 
Uh, Custodian actually validates all those config files with a dynamically generated JSON schema. So you can also do dry run, where you actually it'll actually execute uh, against the environment, but not take any actions. It'll just show you what it would have matched based on your filters. Um, and of course, you can integrate with GitHub reviews, Bitbucket as well for multi-person sign-offs on policies. Uh, and actually, uh, a new tool that we just recently distributed with Spark Custodian is this thing called Policy Stream. I, I've been very interested. Like, when we talk about X as code, um, it ends up being humans that are actually doing reviewing the diffs and things. But what if, you know, how do we make that machine readable? So we have a new tool called Policy Stream that automates taking a Git history of a repo and turning it into a logical diff. Uh, of all the policy changes that were made in that repo, sends it out to Kinesis, indexes into a database, use it as you will. So uh, part, of, part of Custodian's mantra is to enable you to, take, to use all the features of the cloud as they become available. We want to help enable you to take advantage of all the features of the underlying platform. So Custodian has, people are like, well, what if I'm using config? And I'm like, well, custodian is actually the easiest way to write config. I just take any existing policy I've written, I drop two lines in it, and I've got a config role. And it'll just, I run it, and it's deployed. Driver duty, fantastic tool, amazing. Uh, machine learning against all your logs, find out incidents. So what do we do with custodian for driver duty? We want to help enable these services for AWS customers so that they can take advantage of getting secure in, in, in their environments. So we distribute a tool that uh, called C7N Guardian that will actually set up and uh, automate all of your account onboarding uh, for into Guard Duty for the, the you know, multi-account dance to do the enrollment. And then, of course, we want to enable real-time uh, remediation of these things. So we take those same actions uh, that we have for, uh, that we use for other purposes and we string them together. We subscribe to a Guard Duty event. And this one's going to look at any EC2 instance. Um, it'll actually, uh, any EC2 uh, instance event from Guard Duty, see that the severity is high, and then automatically yank the instance profile, stop the instance, snapshot it. You can craft these as you will. And one of the interesting things here, of course, is uh, that we're running, you know, Guard Duty security product. You can run it, you run it out of centralized. So this actually has this member role thing in the green. That's actually going to, you, this actually gets deployed in a centralized account along with your Guard Duty master, and then it'll actually do the role assume back into the target account. So uh, and that's, and that capability is supported with, against most of our execution modes that, that do Lambda and serverless. So you can have that centralized footprint and then govern and manage against your, your, uh, your footprint. Uh, and then, of course, when, you know, our oldie and goldie, you know, this is all based on the, the power of CloudWatch events, uh, basically being able to introspect any CloudTrail API call and then impose behaviors on top of it. It's a very rich, it's a very rich, powerful capability where you're effectively extending the platform to understand your semantics. Um, and then you know, that, that's sort of uh, one of the ways that Custodian got started is by using this capability to drive a lot of our uh, real-time remediation and uh, enforcement. So moving on to policies. Uh, you know, the pitch line for Custodian is really simple. Do you want to save money and do you want to be secure? Who says no? So let's talk about some of the cost savings. So if you're in a big organization and you're letting people do cloud-native things uh, directly interacting with the console, you're going to get some accumulation of things. So one of the key things there is to actually look in, look in that environment and actually see there are things that are not being used and either resizing them, turning them off, sending a gentle reminder that, hey, maybe you didn't need that database with no connections, which is what this policy on the right is doing. It's looking at RDS databases. It's saying this database is at least, this, this, uh, at least 14 days old and has had zero database connections for the last 14 days. So, a database with no connections, by definition, unused. So then go ahead and tag it to be cleaned up and deleted in 14 days. And you can extend this policy across lots of different resource types. Um, we support online resizing on EBS for people that are doing PyOps, uh, setting CloudWatch logs, retention, deletion, et cetera. And so uh, that capability exists you know, fairly comprehensively through most of the cost centers. Uh, and then, of course, Turning off the things you're not using at night. You know, you've got a dev environment, people go home for the weekend, you know, Thanksgiving break, go ahead and turn it off. Um, easy way to, to, to save a lot of money for, for, uh, for your costs. And so this supports EC2, RDS, uh, Aurora, et cetera. So this is a great way just to, to reduce your bill. Uh, and you can actually, this actually enables uh, individual app teams to tag their resources and define custom schedules. Um, so you can just define a default policy here 
in Custodian and then let app teams customize it as they will for their own uh, preference on their own time zone. Switching out to security, AWS security. It's a big topic. And this was like a year ago. I think the, it's the only expanded. Uh, so I'm not going to have time to cover off on all the different security topics. Uh, we've, got, uh, we've done a couple other sessions on YouTube that uh, go into deep, well, deeper, uh, deeper dive across a lot of these topics. But let's cover off on a few. Um, you know, oldies and goldies, this is just table stake stuff. Turn on CloudTrail. Um, turn on config. Uh, these are just things that add a lot of value. Uh, and you know, those are your API logs, and as well as your historical state of your resources. That they're important value adds uh, for a lot of environments. Uh, VPC flow logs. Um, and so we also, you know, in part of Custodian is actually an entire ecosystem of tools. Under our tools directory, we have tools that will help you enrich flow logs, with resource information, taking the raw IP, matching it to a historical database, and giving you enrichment but go ahead and first turn them on everywhere. And so this will help you do that across VPCs. You can do it on a subnet or even on an EDI level. Uh, next topic is IAM. You know, general principle of you know, good privilege. Uh, general principle around IAM is least privilege. Uh, there's a lot of tools that can help you do that. I'm calling out a couple of open source, other open source tools. Netflix is actually uh, screen scraping the IAM access advisor to give you, uh, to give you that information in machine readable form. Uh, it's, a, it's actually a very useful tool. So one of the ways they do it is they let you in dev have a wide open role, see what you use, and then craft your production role out from that based on usage. Um, so switching out to what some of the things that Custodian does for it, I mean, we can do the basics. Make sure you got a good password policy. Make sure everyone's got a, a MFA enabled. Detect the root login, send notifications. Make sure root's got a hardware MFA. Um, so lots of different things around that. And then, you know, people that are coming from, potentially from a data center world, uh, sometimes forget that, you know, they think of the network as the VPC. You know, in the cloud, all these resources are just available via URL. So those are part of your network boundary. And those resources that have embedded IAM policies need special care and attention because they can be enabled to have access, be accessible outside of your account. I think everyone's familiar with some of the things around S3, but that extends out to a lot of the other cap a lot of the other resources. I called out a couple here. Um, actually, an additional one right now is the API Gateway. And so this is a policy that says we've got a policy here on the right. This is actually going to parse the IAM resource policy, and you can actually set individual allowed individual actions on a, a very granular level. You can say, this is my family of accounts. Uh, I've got these you know, 100 accounts, and we're going to pull that list from S3. And if there's any permission in this embedded IAM policy that's granting access outside of these 100 accounts, go ahead and yank it and send an email at an individual statement level. Uh, of course, bucket policy, that cross-account filter reads out to many other, uh, all those resources that have embedded IAM policies. Um, of course, AWS Shield, for those that uh, need DDoS protection, uh, this is a great capability that will protect on ELBs, CloudFronts, ENIs, Route 53s, and uh, Custodian can enable it at an account level, and then make sure that all your resources that are enabled in that account are automatically enrolled. Uh, same thing with AWS WAF. Um, and of course, one of the one thing Custodian is very strong at, because it's been near and dear to our hearts, uh, is doing making sure that everything uh, in your account is encrypted, set up for KMS SSC encryption. So we've got a couple here that'll encrypt. You know, go ahead and find all the things that are not encrypted, and then you can choose to either enable encryption on them or delete them, as the case may be. Uh, so we reside out at cloudcustodian.io. We have an active Gitter channel, 600 users actively helping each other. Come join us. Um, we're out on GitHub, and uh, hopefully we will have, uh, there'll be some uh, other, we'll have some other integrations with the fe new features that are coming out this week. Thank you. <laughs>